Welcome to the Village of North Hudson Public Works Committee meeting of Tuesday, May 17, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. Item number one on our agenda is roll call, call to order. Chair Pike. Here. Trustee McGurin. Here. Trustee Merrill. Here. All right, item number two is approve the minutes of April 19, 2022. Move to approve the minutes of April 19, 2022. Second. Any discussion? Changes? I looked it over right before I came. I, it looked pretty good to me. I mean, we had a really long discussion, obviously, with the public info meeting, but so you had a lot of typing to do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, I okay. watched it. Okay. <laughs> All right. No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Item three is comments from the floor, and the floor is empty. Item number four, discussion, discussion and possible recommendation use of remaining ARPA funding money. Um, so we have a couple of documents in email. Um, specifically, I'm looking at the one that says ARPA possible expenditures. It's just a little word doc right at the top. And we've been asked by the administrator to give some prioritization to what we think we should or could use ARPA funding on. And this is in no way a final list. This is just to show you what Patrick thinks. And if you guys have things you want to add to it, um, this would be the opportunity to bring that up. And he has them here in priority order too, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. So the first one, a portable generator, estimated cost is 55 to 65,000. And again, he the bigger document, the 12.5 meg document that you have shows all the detail around it. Um, do you want to talk about it a little bit? I mean, I, I saw there's like a service contract on there too. Yeah, there was a, um, with the one quote that I had, they um, also offered a five year, 250 hour warranty, and that was another $1,050. Um, I don't know that I'd be opposed to that just because I we like that. Got the, when we got the loader, we got an extra warranty on it is just to so explain the purpose again for the generator so the people know what we're well the generator is for like last year when we lost power everywhere and Hudson lost power um, we basically called a pump truck to maintain all of our um, lift stations so with a portable generator we would be able to just go out and plug in pump each one down and, and maintain for as long as we had to um, also the generator would be used for our new booster station up in the ridges. I would put the same kind of plug on that. Okay. Um, so it would have, you know, at least two uses. Okay. Um, I've, I've looked for used. Um, it's hard to find the size that we need for used. Most of them are real big or real small. Um, so, and, and I don't know I'm not opposed to getting something used as long as it's a good piece of equipment. So does this thing come on wheels so we're able to move it from place to place or do we have to? Well, a brand new one would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Patrick, we only need one to manage all the lift stations? Yeah, because um, I actually, the reason I know this is because when I first started here, we had to, <laughs> we had to do some work on a, on the big Riverside lift station and I had to run all the stations by hand and I was able to pump one down, just turn it off, go to the next one, pump the other one down, turn it off, go to the next and so on. And I did that for most of the day and it was, it was okay. So if we had a, a generator, we, which was on wheels, we mm -hmm. could do the same thing. And how much you said when um, we had the problem, the last problem, you had to bring in a apostle septic and how much was that uh recall let's see he was here for quite a while it was, was. i want to say i want to say it was around two thousand dollars for I'll get you the yeah just sure so we can compare off the top of my head i should have and is something like that available on an emergency basis? I mean, uh, that's is that the other thing is it's, it's, it takes a lot of calling to get those sure. guys. Um, everyone has an after hours emergency number, um, but I called multiple places. I'd get voicemails, call this number, call that number. Um, 
actually got very nervous by the time I finally got a hold of someone. So uh, that would definitely be a big um, peace of mind piece of equipment. It's a little risky. Um, and I talked to Chris uh, from Apostle after that event, and he, he was kind of worn out because it, it's not just us that was out of power. Sure. People are in need of his services in other communities as well. So, mm -hmm. What other functions can you use this for? I, I mean, you could, uh, I guess it's big enough. We could use it to power just about anything that we, you know, anything in the village, like temporary power for the shop or something like that, I suppose. we. I mean, it would, it would have to get wired in, obviously, but, I mean, it, it could have multiple uses. Okay. Pepper Pest use this? I was just, just, just going to bring up the I'm wondering if they yeah. could. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I suppose it's a possibility. <laughs> it's, a, it's a generator, so it, it's, it's definitely a possibility. But it's pretty loud, right? What's that? It's fairly loud, correct? Um, a new one wouldn't be. It's not, okay. The new ones are actually really quiet. Hmm. Need to get one for my home. <laughs> That's what I slept to when I was overseas. I'm like, the generator's running, and it's like, like nice noise in here. Like the Keep new white noise. Um, yep. <laughs> the new cats are, everything is so insulated in them, and uh, they have real quiet motors and stuff. I mean, they don't. I used a few of them when I was drilling wells, and they're they're really quiet. And that's on our side as far as um, the water, the the agreement with Hudson dealing this is, with all. This would be sewer. I'm sorry. Right. Yep. Okay. Got it. The lift station. And yep. the and the uh, and the booster station that's going in up in the ridges that which is ours. Um, I have a temporary power for that too. And the booster station is for water or sewer? For water, yes. But we're still responsible for it? Uh, yes, we would be because it's ours. That, that booster station will actually be the village's. Okay, any other questions about that one? And again, uh, this list is going to eventually go to the board from us, and they're going to get a list from the, the chief and a list from Parks, I assume, too. And and I, if I'm correct, and I'm not positive, mm -hmm. there we had about three hundred, well, about three hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars in ARPA, and we've got about a hundred and fifty thousand left. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, item two is an HVAC replacement for the Village <clears throat> Hall. Um, and I think, Patrick, you're putting that on here because of the age of the one that we've got and anything else you want to add? Yeah, um, I guess my thought with that is, and I put that as a, it was hard to decide between that and the <laughs> lift station, but I, to me, when I, I thought about it for a long time, it's basically affecting us all. Um, the HVAC system is old, um, pretty antiquated. Um, the folks that I had come in and give us this um, quote actually looked at it and said, you know, this really isn't a commercial system. Um, oh, really? <laughs> and we have, so we have issues because one, one person wants to be 65 degrees in the summer and the other per summer or winter or whatever and another person wants to be 74 degrees you know what i mean so the it's constantly fighting back and forth and we have these dampers in the system and what happens is you have air forcing one way against these dampers and they're pretty light duty so those continue i continue to have to replace them well i've kind of gotten to where i just don't replace them until someone complains <laughs> but it ends up blowing cold air or hot air or something into because every office is not separate or every like the admin um, the folks up front um, are tied I believe together I am tied in with the clerk of court so when she adjusts hers that affects me um, the police department obviously those guys they have a lot of stuff on they want to stay a little bit cooler they turn their AC on in the summertime and 
Jenny's got a winter jacket on because it, it, it's cold. I, I, I mean, I'm not trying to disparage anyone, but it's it, for my, someone that's just sitting there. It's, it's my cold. only thought about the HVAC is that instead of coming from public works, I'm thinking it should come from finance committee. It's really more building related than it is. And I know it's your responsibility, so that's why we're seeing it. it yeah, and it probably is. And it basically, this is, um, I investigated this and I talked, I, I've been talking with Melissa about it. So, because um, we both agree with that. And with this system, if you look through it, um, we would have like one main um, furnace and air conditioning units. Yep. And then in each room, would be a unit um, that would be mounted in the ceiling. So each office would have their own control. I could have it 60 degrees and Melissa could have her office 90 degrees and it would not affect anything. Okay. It wouldn't, it wouldn't wreck anything. This is what this system is designed for. So I guess my only point on this is that it seems like this should come from finance committee as one of their wishes. Patrick has, unfortunately, in some ways, he's got parks, he's got the buildings, he's got public works. So he's wearing multiple hats. <laughs> and I don't know if, if it matters to you guys if we keep this on public works or not, or any thoughts? I mean, it's the same pot of money. I guess it depends when it gets to the board, we'll be prioritizing it against the other things. Yeah, and it doesn't really, I, I don't know, in my mind, it, 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 they're all going to get, everything's going to get put It's going to be on so, one big list. Yeah. So I guess if, if we want to just label it as admin, I guess we can. Let's, let's kind of do that because <clears throat> okay. I get a little bit of grief sometimes about our public works getting all the money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this one's really a finance committee thing to me. All right, the last one there is Riverside Drive North, duplex sanitary sewer lift station control panel. That is really us. An estimated cost there is 35. It's installed in 1991, and all the electrical components are in need of replacement. So would you explain what that, what that control panel does on a lift well, ba station? So basically, the, it's all the electronics for the motors. It's the start capacitors, the run capacitors, um, relays, um, heaters, um, all of our meters that we take readings on every day. Um, it also houses the lights um, for all the sensors as far as um, high level, low level, things like that. That's Will nice. this thing be able to communicate to us? It's going to. Okay. <laughs> do, do, I, they, do they communicate to us now, this particular lift station? Yeah text message kind of thing? Uh, it's kind of an alarm. An alarm? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So Patrick, is that not eligible to go into the water or the, the, the sewer water costs for the village? Can we not um, include that in a different uh, billing process? Um, yes, we can. To answer your question, yeah, okay. that, that is possible. Um, but if you... I guess if you want, we could discuss that later. It's there's there's more to it than that. I guess and, <laughs> there always is. I know there always is, but um, it's not it's not impossible to do. Yeah, I, just, I mean that just seems like if it if we can do uh, this and the same thing. I guess I have a question with the portable generator. Is that also not possible to be to go to the sewer costs? Oh sure, yep. It's all very possible. It, it's just like I say, there's other things at play there and I just I can I guess we could have a discussion about that I think the board's gonna ask that same question when it gets to the finance sure. committee for sure sure you know is this something that we should just hit the line item for that uh, particular what, what what number is that on our budget is that 210 or for sewer sewer uh, either two, two, 205 or 210 okay so it's possible the board would say, well, we really think we need the generator, but we don't want to use the ARPA funds for the generator. We're going to hit that budget, which is going to throw that line item out of whack, and then we'd have to get money from, what's it called? 
the slush fund. <laughs> <laughs> but but don't we have the ability to to bill back the costs for the sewer system to the to the rate payers to the customers? We'd have to increase the rates. Um, so we're not bringing in we, enough to do the infrastructure we do development. That? Well, no, that was with storm sewer. That yeah, this, that was it's probably. I don't. I I guess I would. I don't really want to get into that right now. That's a lot of. Or I shouldn't say a lot. It's a. It's probably a different discussion, and I just not to disparage that, but we could we could have a discussion, or if if we got you and I and Nathan together, that would probably be better because he's sure more into the numbers than I am, and I just want to be careful, and not to say that it's not possible. I'm not I'm not saying that at all. Because I mean that is something that we'll probably have to talk about at some yeah. point, like the the sewer. I mean how we're charging back the costs. For the sewer, the the capital expense, the maintenance, all of those things should be paid for by the sewer mm -hmm. ratepayers. Yep. Do we have a? Is the uh, extra charge on our bill is that for stormwater, or do we have a sewer charge on there too? I thought we had an but additional. Both. Isn't it? Yeah, I, th I thought we had an additional. And you know, we haven't looked at that sewer surcharge. Right. Which is an additional thing that. Hudson North Hudson does already mm -hmm. it's not a huge amount right do you, I can't I don't suppose you remember what that number is no. seems like it's like 12 bucks at my house but it's a it's it's definitely something else that we could look at if our costs are going up um, for sewer then well the sewer cost should be coming out of that process yeah. right no I, I completely agree with you 100% these are kind of over and above. Well, the doesn't sound like it. The lift station isn't because that <laughs> should be covered. Yeah. But well, the even generator, a generator. I mean, a backup, a, 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 a emergency operations plan is necessary for every utility. Right. That's part of the operation costs. We've been talking about generator for since I've been here. Since yeah, five years trying to get one. Six. At, at time or six. I guess I'm here seven now. So. There was a point in time when we were working a little more hand in hand with Hudson. If we were down, we would actually go borrow a generator from them mm -hmm. for our emergency situation. But now this last one that we had last summer, they were down. They needed their generator, yeah. and we were stuck. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's not that they wouldn't. We couldn't use right. the generator. It's just that they they have two, and they. I mean that that was a. A perfect storm. They needed theirs way worse than we needed ours. So, and we're so close that that potential is always there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, any other questions about these items? And if not, do you guys have any items that you want us to consider from a public works perspective for ARPA spending? That I rely on Patrick for. <laughs> Did you have any other out there items? You know, like a four, five, six. So this might sound crazy, but uh, Chief and I had actually discussed a boat. A boat? Yeah. That doesn't sound crazy. Well, it kind of does. But what you need a boat for? Well, <laughs> to I guess first of all to put in the buoys. The buoys. Um, and then I talked to Chief because I thought, well, that sounds kind of crazy because I don't like buying stuff that only has one use. I, right. I hate doing that. Um, and he also told me that they, on occasion, need rescue, you know, rescue or something like that. And when they have to do that, they have to either call the sheriff's department with their boat or Hudson with their boat. So. Um, I'm not saying we need to go out and buy a brand new one. I've actually been looking on the surplus site and yeah. like old DNR boats or sheriff's boats or something like that. That's all we would need. And just something we don't need anything fancy or anything like that. But just I guess I, I haven't put together anything, any kind of numbers because I interesting concept. I wanted to I wanted to throw it out there just to see what kind of looks I'd get on your faces. How are we getting <laughs> the buoys out there right now? Is somebody helping us? Uh, yeah, I find somebody that's putting their boat in and have them drag them out. Or um, <laughs> I forget the guy's name now. Um, the DNR. Oh Ford? shoot! No, 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 no. The um, anyways, he he's helped us before. Um, I actually had um, borrowed the boat from Kirk's brother, okay. and uh, 
put, yeah. put them in one year. <laughs> <laughs> I got a neighbor that would probably help us with that but, too. And you know, and then during the, <laughs> and I guess to add to that, during the summer, you've got your current and whatever, and when we put them out there, they end up, inevitably, they end up coming into shore. So then we need to pull them back out. So again, we go, I go wait to see somebody putting in their boat and I go, hey, can I hitch a ride with you to pull them <laughs> out, pull you know? Out. So, I mean, it's not a, a big deal, but I'm just, I guess I'm kind of throwing that out there as a more of a wish than anything. Cause we definitely are getting by with what we have. All right. Anything else, ARPA? You, have, you got a number five? No? No. Okay. All right, so if y'all agree, I guess we would pass this up to Melissa. Well, yeah, we can throw it onto the board. Throw it onto the board, yeah. Okay. Yep. Do we need a boat on this, you think? I mean, I guess you can, or if you just agree that you, or you guys agree with the prioritization that I have, or if you have a different thought, or have another idea or something like that well we have you. we have all these other questions you know about exactly yeah. how to spend yep so should we hold on what kind of rush is she in on getting these recommendations i honestly don't know well she's been got right. she's been on vacation so i'll try usually the first day back is not a good day to start discussing stuff like this but um i can definitely mention it and ask her how we should proceed and, Okay. Well, let's just, I'm not going to vote on it, but you can say we had this discussion and okay. this is where we're, here. What we're I guess what I'd like to hear is you're okay with the order I had things You guys in. okay with the order? Priority order? Well, it's kind of, it's hard to say because the HVAC, if that really doesn't belong in this pot, then we really have the two items for the sewer system that okay. are potentially paid for out of the sewer rates. So then, so then I'm not really sure. You know, and I agree with that. From a public works point of view, I, should, I would take number three and put it in place of number two from a public works perspective because I think the HVAC is more of an admin. Okay. That okay, makes I sense. can. Yeah, but I still, I still am thinking if we've got other sources for um, compensation for these things, if they belong in the in the um, capital fund or the um, operating fund for the sewer, then I don't know if they really, if if that's really what we want in ARPA. Okay. I would say, um, since you're not on the finance committee, the June. I think it's going to be June 7th, the June 7th meeting, probably try and come to that particular finance committee meeting so you can, from the audience, you can still speak to what we're thinking. Okay. Okay. I think we've still got time, too, for ARPA, and I don't recall yes. the dates, but the, it seems like the extension is pretty long. Well, the for first chunk that we were getting, um, I, did we get that yet? Yeah. Okay, the first chunk we were still planning on using it for the Wisconsin Street oh. Project. Which is, we voted on that already, yeah, didn't we? That's, on, yeah. that's underway. That's a done so deal. We're, we're really talking about money that's yet to come. Yep. Yep. And we did, yes, we do have time. It's not, okay. we don't have to make a snap decision. And, you know, if she doesn't, if, she, if she's not planning on bringing it up at the uh, next finance committee meeting, then we have another, we have another meeting in is she but that doesn't mean we can't discuss it there well i'm just back. i'm just thinking it next meeting maybe we ask nathan to come in yeah. if we're still if it still goes off another month ask nathan to come to our next meeting so we can talk more about the financial side yep, yep. where are the sewer rates reviewed i mean does that that isn't this committee yeah it is it it's in public works <laughs> well then then we should definitely have nathan come in so put that uh, down as a future okay. agenda item. Ask Nathan to come and talk budgets with us. Okay. Specifically sewer. Okay. Specifically sewer, yep. Yeah. All right. That takes us to number five, chair update. The only thing I have is uh, for those of you watching, you know that uh, we're 
doing the polymer overlay on the Malu Bridge. I think half of it is done. I think so. Okay. And I don't know what the drying time is on, you know, when they'll switch to the other half, but they'll just reverse what they're doing there. You know, they've got both, it's bi-directional, and then they'll lay down the other. And again, everything depends on the weather. Their original estimate was it was going to take them a week to get it done. So if our weather holds, it should be done by hopefully the end of this week. Correct? I hope so. Yep. Yep. All right, that takes us to number six. Where is our engineer tonight? He couldn't make it tonight. Oh. Okay. Um, do you, did he have anything for you? Any questions that you guys can think of that we want him to consider, our engineer? Um, do we have a start date figured out yet on St. Croix? No, but we are, we just talked about it two days ago and um, we'll be getting that going. So it, it'll be later on, it'll be after Wisconsin Street. Okay. And I'm actually want to see if we can push it to after Pepperfest so that we don't conflict. Good point. Yeah. So since we're still on chair update, um, and maybe you have this in your directory report. Are you going to say anything about the Wisconsin Street project, how it's going? I, yeah, I can when we discuss our projects. Okay. Yep. And right. I, I have a question for Kevin, if if you can relay it for the next meeting. Is the um, the Derrick addition, um, the lift station that's going there that has to be installed before people move in? The booster station. The booster station. Yep. Thank you. Like, where's that at? I would like him to talk about that. Where's it at? Yeah. Um, oh, you already we know. <laughs> we have the device, the yeah. booster. Um, but there's, yeah, there's some stuff to work out yet. There's, um, I don't know how to say it. There's, there's some work to be done before it gets installed. So. And there's still, there's no people there yet? No. No, because they can't issue occupancy permits until that's done in, or installed. And, yeah. So, if we, yeah, if we can just get an update on, on the what the booster. issues are with that. Okay. All right. Anything else? No. That takes us item seven, director report and updates. Patrick. Um, well, I guess to, we did hire a third person, so we got um, a full staff again. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. And... Matt and I both completed um, water and sewer training, so I'll be, he'll get his water and or sewer certification, um, I'll be getting my sewer certification and then as soon as uh, Bill gets his feet a little bit wet we'll get him trained up too so that we're all um, able to do our jobs. Uh, I guess we're just kind of waiting for, we started mowing lawns because grass is growing like crazy or mowing uh, grass <laughs> right away is whatnot. Um, I still haven't heard back from our Welcome to North Hudson sign that got damaged, so I'm kind of waiting on that, the one on the north end that got hit like last, this winter. Really? Yeah. By and, plow or car? Uh, by car, yeah. Uh -huh. Um, so I'm kind of waiting on that. Is that an insurance thing? Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, uh, the hydrant that got went missing on Monroe and Six, the brand new one that got replaced. Everything's all good with that. We that was an insurance thing as well. So that's all taken care of. Uh, Somebody stole a hydrant. No. It. No. It. <laughs> it Oh my god, it went missing. No, Where'd it go? No. So, when you say it went missing, <laughs> wow, well, yeah, it, it, just, it, it wasn't there. It just what so after the project, it got broke. It, okay, yeah, this during winter, the project, sometime this oh, winter, in the winter, yeah, <laughs> yep, and then it was gone. It was not there. What? I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> Wouldn't that have caused, uh, you know, a water leakage or something? No, no, it's not like the movies. No, <laughs> the valves are eight feet in the ground. Okay, so yeah. you have to open the valves. Yeah. So in the movies, yeah. when they shear one of those off and it spews, that's not really. That's accurate. to make the movie good. 
Or I learned so be, much uh, here. Or there could be a wet barrel <laughs> hydrant. There are wet barrel and dry barrel oh, okay. hydrants, and we have dry barrel. Okay. You know it's sitting in somebody's garage right next to their stop signs <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and road signs. Yeah, probably. And probably the welcome to North Hudson. Yes. <laughs> no, we do have that sign. Okay. It just got broke, and so um, because it was made quite some time ago, um, I had to track down who made it so we could get the same one, and um, it's just taken a while to get stuff because nobody's nobody can get things. Um, so hopefully that will be done soon. Um, we did. I've started a little bit of spray patching. We did a little bit of hot patching. Um, we're spray. I've got the schedule to come and do some spray patching next week, starting on Monday. Um, if we're not keeping up, I guess, or can't keep up with St. Croix County, then we'll, um, now that we have a third person, I'll investigate just going and renting the machine like we did last year and, and um, doing, doing our own spray patching or a little bit of our own spray patching. Um, did, we, did we see the final analysis? Yeah, I think I presented it to you. And could you just remind me then? So it was like three, it came to like $325 an hour for, and you can't quote me on any of this, right. um, for St. Croix County to do it. And then it was like 175 an hour for us to do it with rental. Did we complete as much as we would have completed had we had St. Croix do it? Okay. So it's no, because I kind of, well, that, that was a different crew. Right. And yeah. Okay. Yep. And yeah, I don't know. I think that's all I got. Really? <laughs> I think so for now. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary. The, um, we talked a couple months ago about the non-functioning hydrants that were identified, only hadn't at that point received information about where oh, they were or okay. the status. Do you want to, yeah, should we do that in the next one? I've got okay, sure. ready for it. Oh, perfect. Yep, yeah. that'd What's be great. What's the next one? The, the WSA? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, before we hit the WSA, is there anything left on the checklist for 35 that still needs to be completed? Mm -hmm. How big is that list? Uh, it's not very big. That's right. You guys wanted to see that. Um, and Kevin's not here. So we'll, we'll bring that to the next meeting. Um, punch list. Do you know how that's going with Hudson? Is their punch list getting knocked off? Or? It's not my so, area. I know. I just, I see, well, it was one big project in some way, so I thought. It was, yeah. I try to mind my own business. Okay. All right. Anything else for Patrick? Item eight, discussion of future agenda updates, topics regarding the WSA quarterly meetings. Okay, Patrick. So we have a document that he sent us on this in email. Um, in that email is the signed water service agreement. Um, I want you to, and then Patrick's got its, their training history in here, but the WSA current discussion topics. Be the training history is just kind of a side note. It kind of reinforces some of the answers that I had given. So <laughs> when you say Article 4 WSA, you're referring to Article 4 in the actual agreement, right? Yes. Okay. So, Patrick, and, and this is something that, I don't know how to say this correctly, but as we're only, I mean, we signed this in September of 21, right? So the agreement's good till 24? Well, it's three years. Yeah, three-year agreement. But along the way, what I'm suggesting to Patrick is, as he runs into situations that are, are either not clear or need clarifying in the water service agreement between us and Hudson, we start marking them like this. So Article 4, and he's got these things that he wants to have done. And he's keeping us informed of it. And then these items should go to the next quarterly WSA meeting. And they have items for us as well, which I, I think you, yeah, yep. you have questions from Hudson in yep. here. Yeah, two questions. Yeah. So, without reading every one of these things, do you have any questions for Patrick about these things? Or do you want him to explain each one? 
I didn't get a chance to review this before the meeting, so okay. it would be great if we could go through them. Yeah, no, that's that's perfectly fine. Um, so I guess the in the first part of it, the Article Four of the agreement, this was a this was a question um, that was asked by um, Hudson at the last meeting was um, on Sand Hill Point Road North. There are curb stops curb stop boxes that's where our our control is at so from that curb stop to the home is private and then from the curb stop out and the mains is the villages or the city's utilities uh, responsibility um, one of there was a resident down there that needed water shut off um, they were we were all kind of digging around trying to find the curb stop which I've um, been doing that for six years now just trying to find them all and raise them up and whatnot but um they they were um they had found it it was buried under the asphalt um and then once we once they got it it was bent and inoperable um i guess um the question was asked is who would pay for that um i just thought I was a little confused by that because um, the water service agreement basically states all repair and maintenance would be done by the uh, city. So that was that was the first point. Um, so Patrick, is that like a, an open question, or has that gone to the attorney, or was it discussed at the it meeting? It was. It was discussed, um, and then it'll we'll probably discuss it again at the next. Um, water service agreement and which wasn't uh it wasn't televised right we will make sure that it's televised the next time so um but if it's in the contract minutes right yeah that meeting okay but it's in the contract so is it is there a conflict between uh, what the contract says is there a dispute about what the contract says or had they just not read the contract like what was the issue not for me i guess i don't i don't know what the issue was i i honestly don't it was we were at the um, council chambers yeah. and it just wasn't recorded okay but is there an issue with them covering this cost oh with that i'm sorry i missed your point i apologize um i i don't know i honestly don't have we the, fixed it no and okay. which our agreement we we aren't getting paid for that kind of stuff so anymore so i don't know why that would you know i'm not sure why that would be our responsibility okay so it has been brought to their attention and we're waiting for a response we'll discuss it again they they were waiting for i guess or wanted us to think about it <laughs> is how it was ended <laughs> it was that was kind of the end of the conversation it does need to be fixed right well yeah it's gonna have to okay so all right i mean that's what i've done for six years is i mean you stuff's old i find them bent or buried and we fix them as needed you know okay. repair them or whatever so, so then the question is is that their responsibility and by your interpretation of the water agreement it's their responsibility definitely yes if you read the yeah 4.1.1 the city is responsible for all costs pretty much spells it right out okay <laughs> all right so that these points are going to be on your next wsa meeting right yes okay all right any other questions about number one all right number two um the, actually the second one may not be um because i do i i asked about the psc and dnr um documentation of the acceptance of the water agreement because during our um discussions and trying to come to an agreement it was stated multiple times that the dnr and the psc would have to approve this so now i'm or we i was told that there is no approval from the dnr or the psc they just need to see it so uh, it was, i was told that it was emailed to both um, places and they have a copy of it and they didn't have to approve it that's what i was told it was on the list for the from the dnr as one of the things that needed to get taken care of just telling you what i was told they just wanted an agreement is what i'm hearing and now that there's an agreement and they've got it on file yeah. it's not like they have to approve it they just had to have an agreement which we have 
Yeah. So is it, what is the name of that long document again? Sanitary? A sanitary survey. And that, it, that was in that spreadsheet of things that deficiencies. Yeah, it was to, was, it was the, what was in there was to update the agreement because technically we had an agreement okay. and then it got terminated. So can we get from the DNR that that deficiency has been satisfied? Because they had it as a deficiency. I can contact Corey Larson. See I if guess. Corey will send us something. Yeah, that sure. Makes sense. And as far as the PSC, I was never clear on that myself. Um, I guess if nobody's bothering the PSC about it, it's not going to be an issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, item three. All right, and then uh, receiving information regard regarding water quality complaints. Um, this was something that I discussed. Um, I discussed it at the first quarterly meeting um, and then brought it up again. Basically, I had the same questions because the questions didn't, I guess, to my satisfaction, get answered in the first quarterly meeting. Um, but I guess I was led to believe that we would get if they got a complaint and they had to take some type of action that I would get those um, complaints. Um, and my argument to that was is that when before when Corey would come and do our part of the sanitary survey, I had a whole packet full of complaints. Most of them were handwritten, but as long as you have them, that's good enough. So I just thought that that is something we should have that documentation because it is still our system. So when they get a complaint, are they logging it into a computer system? I have no idea. Can we find out? I think out? most of it goes through Jace. The, the um, I don't know if he's like the, I'm not sure what his title is, but he does, he does a lot of the computer stuff out there. Well, but you, I'm just saying if they are, if they get a phone call and they get a complaint and they log the thing in, can't, they should be able to send us out a report, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Can we find that out? Sure. Okay. So Patrick, when you asked about that, um, if I recall right, you were told that you would get them if they took action, or that was in the minutes. Is that, yeah. is that yeah. right? Yeah, yep. And, and which I'm, I'm okay with that, because if okay. it's something where okay. somebody calls in and says, hey, I've got cloudy water, a lot of times the first thing I tell people to do is run your faucet for 10 or 15 minutes. If it doesn't clear up, then call me back. So. Um, and 90% of the time that does Those the trick. Are, so you just want ones that are actionable? Yeah. Okay. And at this point, there haven't been any? As far as I know, no. Nope. Okay. Which probably isn't the case. Well, would, that would be a really great report to have at the quarterly water meeting, how many complaints there were and what the resolution was. Sure. Well, he should have it for his records, too. Yeah. Well, if it comes in the minutes or whatever of the report, with with a hard copy or electronic copy yeah absolutely mm -hmm. um is there anything else not on that one okay um and then number four is res um this is kind of something that i put in there that i think is is important that mm -hmm. i would think that hudson does a work order if something needs to be fixed that maybe we could receive those work orders um, in a timely fashion, just so that we can go out, or I can go out and look. Hey, yep, this was done. Not to say that it's not getting done. I'm just, it's just nice to to know that stuff. Um, if anything were to change with this contract, we we would be able to. You have transfer. a repair history. You'd have the history. Yeah, mm -hmm. which we do now, and then there would just be a gap in it. So, um, and there. Um, it was so the hydrants that were um, inoperable uh, were at 360 Summers Landing Road and 719 Summers Point Road North. Um, I did go look at them. I I guess it kind of looks like there was some oil or something. They maybe clean them off a little bit. I don't know. I was told they had to actually remove them and take them back to the shop and clean them and oil them and so they're operable now i assume so but you don't have a report saying that they are no 
no. and you're after that. I would like that. Yeah. Okay. So all these points, Patrick, are things that you want added into the next version of the water agreement, that you want these part of the contract that these things are provided? Is that correct? Well, I don't know that they necessarily need to be added in, but they're, I think that, that stuff is already in here. About the, well, the maintenance, and the maintenance is what I'm hearing, that you're really looking for documentation of complaints and yeah. maintenance, and yeah. that is in the agreement? Well, I, I, to me, if I'm asking for it, that would fall under section or Article Four. In information requests. You know, if the city requests information, records from the village, we need to get it to them um, in a satisfactory amount of time. I think it's twenty one or twenty nine days, and it also it's twenty one days, and it also um, says that if the village requests information, to the city regarding the water system, the city will. Yep. Treat the village yep. the same in the same manner. Yep. So You're right, I think so. that all falls under that. So I don't know that there's a need to add anything in. Yeah, it's here. We're just looking for them to act on it. Yep. Um, twenty one days, in fact, after the request. Yep, twenty one. Yep. So And are you all your requests being put in writing or are they going to the meeting? Well, I guess both. Um, okay. Because they get a copy of our agenda, right? Um, so those those basically are questions, my agenda items. So yeah, they are getting okay. copies of that. Um, yeah. So and then I guess the hydrant and valve maintenance records and procedures. Um, I had asked for that the first meeting, the second meeting. Um, I did get copies of the hydrant. Um, flushing maintenance um, <clears throat> the valves they start or they'll be starting on uh, this year I guess so and then finishing up the hydrants because only dead ends were flushed last year okay any questions about that all right article 9 and then that one I just kind of put on there because I I guess I wanted to make sure you guys were okay with that, but I, I the list is list of deficiencies. Um, I will I will leave on the agenda, just kind of as even if we don't discuss it, it'll still be on there, just because I think that's how the whole agreement got started and that um, things got pushed. Um, so we should I should leave that on there to find out if there's new deficiencies, um, what's been resolved. And uh, things like that. So, is that public record then, Patrick? Is that part of the stuff that the DNR posts that you could just go see? The the deficiencies. Yeah, it should be, and it's all and it's all on our sanitary survey. And how often do those get done? Every three years. So there's a list of deficiencies, and some of them were ours, some of them are Hudson, mm -hmm. from the DNR in particular. I'm not aware of any from PSC, no, but, but the DNR has this list and right. there are things like we have too much chlorine in our water at well so-and-so and we mm -hmm. want to know if they're working on those deficiencies. So it says they shall provide you with a copy of all correspondence from the DR, DNR relating to our water system in a timely manner. Have you received any correspondence from the city regarding from the DNR? Uh, not for quite some time. And the last correspondence I got was the sanitary survey that was done last year. Have you seen the sanitary mm -hmm. survey? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, Jen, you probably haven't. I have not. I can get you a copy. Can you get her a Sure. So we're assuming there has been no correspondence because you haven't received any. You would assume correct. Yep. Okay. So talking with Kip once about this I mean they're working on stuff the DNR has asked them to fix mm -hmm. on you know all year long they're doing that and then they communicate what they fixed for them and we're hoping they're communicating what they're fixing for us now too but we have no insight into that communication unless Kip lets us know yeah because most of that from what I understand that's done by email him back right. and forth with Corey All right. So and so that 
goes to these are questions from Hudson. Yeah, these were um, the two questions that they had. Um, the future construction projects, who's responsible for shutoffs, flushing, valve control, sampling, et cetera. Um, basically, our answer was that the village staff would perform these duties. That was um, talked, I know it was for sure talked about when we were doing the agreement. And it, 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 uh, I believe is in here as well. Um, it was, uh, these duties, as it was stated in the first quarterly meeting, that the village and the utility staff received the same training, and that would be your attached um, training history for all of all the utility guys and us. So that, that way, um, I guess you can compare and see that we we do actually get the same training. Um, and then they had a question of projects and why is the city not invited or involved. Um, to which we were wondering which project they were talking about. <laughs> um, okay. So it, it ended up being Wisconsin Street, but um, the Wisconsin Street project's been talked about by us for quite a few years. Yeah, but... Um, and, yeah. I, and I get it. it. You know, after the water agreement was signed in September and we're starting on Wisconsin Street, you know, this year, this spring, mm -hmm. I guess it would it would be logical that we would let them know that that project's starting and it's running from this date to this date and here's what's involved. Yeah, no, and, and, and I guess to that is, is um, the director had actually contacted Kevin Oyam, and so he did, they got the plans, um, they were able to comment, we made some changes that they wanted done so that they, they were in the know of. Okay. Of what was going on and then uh, I also discussed the st. Croix Street project that was coming up and there are no utilities underneath those two blocks so it shouldn't shouldn't affect anything okay as far as the water service agreement I guess goes all right anything else on WSA I mean this is all new to us we're gonna both Hudson and North Hudson are going to figure out the best way to communicate, and that's part of what that whole agreement's about. Um, and once we get it smoothed out, so we're getting the information that we need and the information they need, it should those WSA meetings should go quicker and quicker <laughs> down the road. That's my hope. And just a touch on, we did talk about that. What I had talked about in the first. Uh, meeting uh, um, the second one I brought up again was the chain of command because I really didn't get um, an answer um, and basically what we decided that everything will go through um, for North Hudson be the public works director administrator president and for Hudson will be the public utilities director administrator and the mayor that's where all correspondence will go through okay <laughs> And those are basically also the same people that are on the WSA or the WSA meetings. Yep. So, okay. That's all I got on that one. Item number nine, 2022 projects discussion only. Is that an update on our capital spending? It, no, 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 no. I just kind of threw that in there just because we've got Wisconsin Street going and, and um, future um, St. Croix Street. Um, Kevin is, or I probably said this already, but we are, we'll be working on that uh, St. Croix Street, um, sending that out for, it'll have to be a public notification and whatnot to get that um, going, which it should be a pretty quick um, project because it's just a pulverize and overlay. Are there any assessments involved in that project? Uh, yes. So and that was, I think we, the board voted on board that, did that to right. use some of the ARPA funding to cushion that. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then the um, Wisconsin Street seems to be going along pretty well. Um, we had a couple mishaps, I guess, but problems got solved and, and whatnot. And just, it's just, it takes some getting used to. It's just like the 35 project, we. I'm just as bad as my neighbor. I don't like to be inconvenienced either. I fear change. I 
I just hate it. So it just takes a while to get used to things, and, and it's it's actually been working pretty well. Um, I do have to say that uh, A1 has been doing a, a good job of keeping access open for Willow River. Um, we also have their access going out onto 35, so um, there haven't been issues. Um, I've actually tried to stay more in contact with the Malu, the um, guy and the gal that run the place, just to keep them give them updates so that they they know what's going on and that seems to help out a lot do you know do they feel like they're on schedule because it almost looks to me like they're ahead of schedule <laughs> yeah they are a little bit okay yep so do you know what's done what did, uh, they, what did they lay first that first day? sanitary sewer that was just sanitary sewer mm -hmm. so they've got water to lay yet uh they they started on that okay yep and then the last, th where does the electrical come in? We don't do any electrical. I thought there was an issue related to, on the timing related to Excel. Gas. Oh, it was gas. Yep. Okay. That has, that came into play a few times just because of getting close mm -hmm. to it. And then they have a, Excel has a watchdog down there to, because it's a high pressure right. line and <laughs> they can't shut it off because it serves a lot of people. Right. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a continuing thing, and then it'll probably be even more so when we do the storm sewer. Okay, so it's just it's just something we have to. So a storm we'll sewer last to. thing they're going to lay, they'll lay water next, and then storm sewer. Or do they lay those simultaneously or no? Okay, do one thing at a time, then they'll do all the hookups, and then they'll do the storm sewer. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for him about the Wisconsin Street project? Are the neighbors all okay? <laughs> Seem, seems like everybody's all right, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I haven't had a whole, I mean. I think after the 35 project. Like I said, project, you get a little bit, you get a little bit. After the 35 project, that one's actually <laughs> probably it, it, not. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's, no, because they're keeping it open, too. Yeah, yeah, it's not a complete shutdown like 35 was. They're doing a great job at night of making sure that thing is back open. It's, mm -hmm. I'm really amazed how well they've done at that. Yep. Okay. Um, anything else on 2022 projects? Do we have any other projects besides those two that are being done this year? No. Just parks? Um, like, maybe, I guess. Okay. Like a court or something? Yeah, probably, <laughs> yep. I just yeah we're reminder trying, we're that, trying his, to do that his yep. time gets split between the two. And the, you all be getting the goats here soon. So oh, and the goats are coming. <laughs> they are. Oh, I'll, I'll be going get them pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> what park are we starting the goats in? I'm thinking it, probably Woodcrest. But <laughs> Woodcrest. We'll see. They're Which one's Woodcrest again? Eat the weeds. So on tenth, off a of tenth, south of Summers, by stands. By stands. Okay. All right. Goats. Okay. I think I think our newest member would like to hear a little bit more about the goats. Oh, she doesn't know about the goats. Can we discuss that? Um, <laughs> it came from our committee, right? Are they like free-range goats? That yeah, it's, the it's just yeah, it's free. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> we'll bring them in, and they'll eat all the invasive species: the buckthorn, buckthorn. Uh, um, sumac, the whatever. They'll pretty much eat anything. We're cleaning out our parks with goats, basically. Yeah. This is a, we're going to test it on. Woodcrest, and everything goes well. We'll move them from park to park as time goes on. And just have them clean it out. Yeah, Hudson's done it. Other people have done it. <laughs> okay. Kind of cool. There, yeah, you um, look it up online. There's like a lot of places that are doing that now. <laughs> okay. All right. Soon to be seen live in action here yeah. in the village of North Hudson. Yeah. Okay. We got a park down on Riverside, don't we? <laughs> I don't know. How's your yard looking? Uh, you know, there's not much there, but the neighbors on the hill could use some. All right, well, we'll some goat action. See what we can do. All right. <laughs> Item ten: Discussion, Public Works, Capital Equipment, Current, and 2023 Budgeting. So you are going. Uh, last meeting we discussed you coming with a, starting to show us a priority list. Yes, we did. <laughs> um, not there yet. I'm. I am not there yet. No. Um, I just like I said. I, I've got no good excuse. No, I don't have it yet. But um, I don't know if I brought it up or not. But we. Um, the one thing I would put on would be a plow for the new truck that we bought. 
Um, and there was a few other things. I'll I'll make sure I have it next meeting. So it may be what you could do is just use the same list, the 2022 list, and uh -huh. just start at 2023 below it so we can look at both. Okay. Well, I remember the last time I did that, that created a lot of confusion. Well, for starters. Okay. And then if and then you know if some are completed for 2022, yep. just run the line through them. I just want to be able to show what we've done yep. too. Okay. All okay. right. Yep. Any questions about public works budgeting for 2023? Nope. Not till we see the priorities. Yeah, and usually we don't start till when is it? July, July or August? Wow. July. I've kind of started now, so it, it, okay. yeah. The, the officially, we really don't start until the end of August. I keep it on here because I, I like the idea of having it running. Mm -hmm. You know, as okay. we discuss stuff, we can get it on the sheet, his mm -hmm. priority yep. sheet, and it reminds us because <laughs> mm -hmm. sometimes we forget stuff. Yep. All right, item eleven: future goals, agenda items. Anybody got any future agenda items or goals? We mentioned one earlier. Yep, the getting from Nathan, right. the presentation on the sewer rates. Ask, ask Nathan to meet with I us have that. next Real time. Time. Yep. Um, and we wanna discuss sewer and yep. how the two line items work in our budget uh -huh. and what goes in and out of them. I think he's got a list. He showed me that list of what's in uh -huh. each. So maybe bring that cause I'm sure Jen doesn't know mm -hmm. and give us a chance to ask him about what if we need more money than we're taking in? Mm -hmm. Because things like, it, it, this isn't the only panel that we want to fix, right? This is one of. Uh, for right now, yeah, that's the oldest one. Everything's pretty. But we got two others that, I mean, we replace East Bank, right? Yep. So there's two others that are coming. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah, we're not there yet. But. I know, but if we can, in a budgeting way. Sure start putting a little more money in those funds so when those things hit us we don't have to go hit the yep yep i got gotcha. you I, I i like the way mary said it we should be making sure that we've got enough coming in to uh -huh. take care of that stuff yep i agree okay anything else mm -hmm. all right any other business any other business if not we are adjourned at 6 32 p.m thank you